Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week. And a look forward at what might happen in coming weeks. And hopefully, lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market hit a bump on the road to nirvana last week as eight consecutive up days and eight consecutive all-time highs gave way to some minor selling. Early in the week, the stock market stalled after Elon Musk ran a poll on Twitter and said, uh, "Let's uh, give me your answer. Do you want me to sell 10% of my stock? And the followers said yes by a narrow margin. Um, and this weighed on the stock market early in the week. It was later reported that he actually sold $5 billion worth of Tesla stock. The stock made, had made a high the previous weeks of uh, 1243 and last week an interday panic low down at about 987 Truth is, is that um, he actually has about $15 billion in, stock, in liabilities, tax liabilities, based on uh, his stock options. He talked about, you know, using money to cure world hunger and stuff like that, but he needed to sell uh, based on those tax obligations. So um, certainly uh, his uh, whole uh, staged event around uh, this uh, Twitter poll and all that, well, he intended to sell anyway. Uh, selling $5 billion so far, well, that's not going to be enough. While this did bring a pause to the stock market, there still is a rotation going on as uh, money uh, has moved out of some of those growth names and uh, certainly in a big way out of the stay-at-home stocks into the infrastructure, reopening stocks. Uh, uh, the semiconductors, they really took over on the upside and they helped the NASDAQ uh, to uh, avoid a big loss based on, well, this Tesla decline. But the inflation numbers, they worried investors. And we saw a PPI that was a stunning number, 8.6% uh, year over year for that PPI. That had only on Tuesday had brought modest selling. Wednesday, though, was the perfect storm. The CPI comes out up nine tenths of a percent for the month. That's 6.2%. Uh, year over year, and the highest number in 31 years. The stock market was weaker on the CPI uh, uh, information, but then when the 30-year auction came out, it was the worst 30-year auction, well, ever by some measures. There was a 5.2% tail. That just shows that there were no buyers, and momentarily, interest rates surged to the upside. And the S&P 500, reacting to that, well, they care about interest rates. Certainly, well, it moved down a quick 50 points on Wednesday, but then it rebounded some uh, and moved uh, to a better level of down about 35 points on the day at the close. FOMC must be taking psychedelic drugs to not see the danger in their policy. A little LSD can make any inflation look transitory. I'm now certain that their meetings are being held and rooms lined with Jimi Hendrix posters and black lights, tripping their way to the next meeting, and as they say to each other, oh, what's happening? Well, I don't know, man. They're actually, and admit, clueless. Uh, and uh, though I'm making a joke right now, um, I do think that it's actually a tragedy. It's not funny, uh, and through their irresponsible policies, uh, they have left damage in their wake. Um, the, their uh, a double mandate, well, part of that is that there should be stable inflation. But they're trying to save the country, right, through their policies. Well, while they do it, they have raped seniors and savers, who for these last 13 years have not been able to make any money 
on their savings. And uh, lots of seniors that I talk to really feel the effects of that as they save money, but they can't earn a dime on their money on the 0% interest rates. Actually, you know, when you look at the inflation rate, you know, they're mandated to keep stable inflation. But since this great experiment since 2009 through, well, the beginning of now 2022, inflation has been over 30%. That's the cost of living to everybody. And there is no way that uh, earnings have kept the pace. They have well logged uh, a lag that. So the value of our money has collapsed. And now they've caused through all of their monetary stimulus and and uh, fiscal stimulus, huge disruptions. Uh, whereas uh, this inflation is not likely to go away. And uh, I recently uh, showed a piece that showed that the PPI uh, rate of uh, increase is much was much faster than the CPI, and that means there's inflation embedded in the system. And uh, that is still the case as we see these numbers right now. So we're going to see more and more of that. Um, if you just look at real estate and autos and food and energy uh, and the crypto nonsense that's going on as money goes into these incredibly speculative areas and bringing these historical stock market valuations uh, that we have never seen. And when you get to valuations that are crazy, well, the stock market reacts in a big way. So get this clear, the Fed didn't save us. Uh, and Wednesday's bond market hissy fit may be foreshadowing more to come. I'm gonna do a big picture analysis for you in just a few minutes on the bond market, and you're gonna see what I mean and why there are risks out there. So while the stock market still shows us a bullish technicals, and we still think there's some more coming on the upside for the indexes, Interest rates, well, they're going to go up. They must. And that will disrupt uh, this fear of missing the next rally in the stock market and change it to a real fear of losing money in the face of sharp stock market declines. For the week, well, the major indexes down between 1% and 2%. Here, uh, I'm recording this on Friday morning because I have to get out a little early today. The 30 years, well, they're, they lose uh, just under a point, uh, a volatile week, and that's after uh, gains on the previous week. But the 10-year interest rates, the 10-year notes, they uh, gained 10 basis points in yield. And there is a serious flattening going on in the yield curve. Uh, and uh, that's the markets getting ahead of the Fed. And uh, considering that interest rates have to go up, well, when that happens, it slows the economy, slows inflation, and uh, we're going to be showing you our targets in interest rates in just a few minutes. Gold, that gains $36 or so despite a strong dollar. Silver up about 85 cents. This is unusual where you get actually a short-term breakout in the dollar to the upside. Uh, and instead uh, of the uh, these markets reacting negatively, well, they gave some back when uh, interest rates spiked, um, they're focused on inflation. And uh, the crypto market, well, got a little bit softer. Uh, Bitcoin, take a look at that weekly chart. It's got a shooting star there. And we think that it's gonna try to test that $69,000 area, but then a quick move back down to 58,000. And of course, we're very negative uh, going into next year for the crypto market, NFTs, all of those. There's some bad stuff coming in there. The dollar, well, it had big gains, 1%. Uh, as uh, the markets look at inflation and the prospect for higher interest rates, and the fact that you know the, the uh, conditions uh, look worse, actually, in Europe and other parts of the world, um, and uh, the uh, interest rate structure worldwide uh, might mean that US rates go up more, so money is moving into the dollar based on that. The oil market, well, it loses for the third week in a row after its big gains that it had, about $2.30 right now. Talk about releasing energy out of the SPR. Uh, and that, of course, would uh, put pressure on the market if uh, it does uh, get put more supply out there. Of course, that's usually temporary. But still, we're looking at the gasoline market as having a breakdown. And that's a signal that we're likely looking at a top 
in the energy market for some period and going into some more significant correction. So that's the opening right now. We've got some great stuff coming up, as I said. Uh, preview uh, that you'll see on the international markets. Uh, RV is going to do some great teaching around cycle analysis that you're going to see. I'm going to do a big picture analysis on the bond market uh, where I'm going to show you monthly charts uh, and a weekly chart. And I think you're going to get a good sense for why there is danger in the bond market right ahead or higher interest rates. And I'm going to give you my uh, intermediate view on the stock market on the S&P. 500. So let's take a look at what we have on our website. Um, I want you to go there. Uh, go to AskSlim.com. Become a free member or at the end I'm going to show you how you could uh, take advantage of our popular services preview for free. Uh, go to uh, YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're watching this there, please do click that notification bell. Uh, that you'll get notified when we put videos up and like this video. Give it a thumbs up. On Twitter, follow us at AskSlim.com. And for any questions on our membership info uh, that we offer, uh, huge offerings of education and analysis, you can write to Matt at AskSlim.com. All right. Uh, every single week, uh, we either do an uh, 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 real deep analysis on the international markets, or we do it on a stock sector. RV does a fantastic presentation on those, where he teaches cycle analysis and brings you all of this analysis on weekly charts and daily charts. You're going to see a preview of that right now as he brings you the, uh, the Australian ASX 200 and the European Euro Stocks Index, uh, where he does a fantastic job. So uh, we're going to show you that right now. Uh, and uh, if you want to see the complete video, please do become a level two, three, or four member. So enjoy this preview. So this is the weekly cycle chart for the ASX 200. These charts are all built on TradingView. And as we have been highlighting in recent weeks, we have been looking for a bottom to form in the ASX 200. We are looking at this as a weekly flag in the context of a bullish cycle with a higher cycle low relative to the prior cycle low. Given this overall weekly cycle structure that we see, we will look for new swing highs in this next rising phase. Now, we have this nice upturn in the weekly momentum, as you can see right here, that is really leading us to believe that we are in this new rising phase here on the weekly time frame. So on the upside, we're looking for a move through this prior cycle high here at 76.29 if that were to happen next levels up are this um, intermediate 78.6 to 100 from around 78.80 to around uh, 81.09 or so if we go ahead and shift over to the daily chart you'll see what we're looking at on, on the daily and we highlighted this in market week um, last uh, time we did a market week featuring the international markets and we were looking for a higher low to form here in this daily cycle and that's really what is happening right now very likely we are forming this higher low we have already bounced off of this green zone from around 73.40 to around 72.67. So this is really what we're looking for. We're looking for that zone to hold it on the downside, form our, our low really any day now, and then move back up and then actually break out through that daily cycle high right here at 74.77. So that's really what we're looking for here in the ASX 200 on the daily is for this um, cycle base to form on the daily and then to move through and then push back up here on the upside. So this is a very positive overall pattern as we look at it in the ASX 200 and really one of the best long side uh, trade ideas that we see here in all 11 markets. So this is the Eurostox 50 and what we see here as well is you can see this nice upturn in the weekly momentum right there and that really coincided with this minor cycle low so we got into the rising phase of this minor cycle with our dominant cycle still now clearly pushing up we only had a retest of that 78.6 we did not have a breakdown below it so this really did save 
itself here and has now turned up sharply. So this is overall a very uh, positive pattern as we still have a lot of time left in this dominant cycle really for likely further upside. So our overall bias here in the Euro stocks 50 is still positive. On the upside, we are looking for a move to this intermediate 161.8 at 45.23, and that's with the Euro stocks 50 at 43.54. So uh, still looking for likely meaningful upside here in the coming months. If we look at the daily chart, you'll see the daily cycles right here. So this is really a bull flag that's forming here into this minor cycle low with a minor cycle low due in the next week or so. So really any time now we would look for a short term low to form and then for this to turn back up. We do have a very positive slim ribbon so we would look for this uh, zone here to act as minor support and that zone comes in from around 4326 to around 4262 so we would watch for that zone to hold such as what happened here and here and each of those led to nice bounces up so that's really what we're looking for in the euro stocks 50. on the upside we have a short term 127.2 at uh, 4404 and a short term 161.8 at 4533 those are our upside targets here in the euro stocks 50. All right, you could see that fantastic work by RV. You really get a sense for our cycle analysis. Uh, please do make sure that you take a look at our workshop uh, on our website. All kinds of free information on that on the cycle analysis workshop at asslim.com. Great work, RV. All right, so now we're going to bring you something a little bit different. We're going to bring you our big picture analysis on the U.S. Treasury market. Um, something that's a little different this year is that my role as I'm moving towards retirement is uh, changing in that I'm going to be doing uh, less videos as the years go by and uh, not going to do a year-end show this year as I've done in the past. I'm just going to bring the big picture analysis as I think it is important to our members. I decided to put this one uh, on the uh, Market Week show because uh, I talked so much about interest rates earlier in the show and I thought I would just bring that here uh, to the public. And you get a good sense for looking at this multiple time frame analysis as we're going to look at uh, weekly and at monthly charts. Um, overall, um, the analysis that we did on the stock, on the bond market was spot on. Uh, as we saw trouble uh, in, the, in the bond market and breakdowns uh, and the likelihood for interest rates to move up. We actually see that condition still existing. And I'll show you what we were looking at uh, in just a moment when we switch over to the monthly charts. I want you to look at the weekly chart right now in ZN. And this is uh, the chart of the 10-year uh, futures that we're looking at. You'll see on the bottom, I'm just going to blow this up a little bit for you to see, are what we call cycle brackets. Uh, this is the big dominant cycle bracket right over here. And then there's a half cycle right here, and it breaks it down into smaller cycles. This dashed line right over here is TLT, and the smaller one over here is the ZN, uh, as it fits into these large cycle harmonics. If I go over here, you could see how well that fits into this important low. I'm just going to blow that out again so you can see uh, as the uh, low forms right over here in this nested area where all the cycles come down and the same thing right over here. What's important is that the next nested area when everything is pointing to the downside comes out over here into the beginning of February. That means that when the decline resumes that we would expect that it would decline out into February. Take a little closer look right here and uh, you will see that this is an important level that we're looking at in the, in the bond market right now, the 10-year. Right there where it made that low, uh, if it were to get underneath that level at 129.31 again, it would then signal a resumption to the downside and then a likely significant decline that would take you to uh, an important uh, super major 50% right over there, uh, which takes you down to one about 120 uh, under 129. I'll show you in a moment what that translates to in interest rates. So what we have here is this cycle right in here, 
right there, and then the next one that bottomed right here, and then the next one that's due to bottom here with the TLT cycle and with the intermediate and major cycles right over there all pushing down. That is a time when you can get very significant downward movements, even in this very bullish case that we got there. Uh, this was an important violation right over here, and that told us of a significant top in the market, which we believe that the bond market was negative at that time, interest rates going up, and that was accurate. And now we're getting into a time period where it could still fool around a little bit in here, but between sometime in November and February, there is likely to be very sharp downward movement. So that's a look at the weekly chart. I'm going to bring in the monthly chart right here on the ZNs, and this you're going to find absolutely fascinating. So what we're looking at here is th this little gray box was, uh, was there when we uh, did our analysis a year ago, uh, almost a year ago, uh, when we talked about the high for the year uh, is likely to be in the first quarter. It actually was right in here. We said the expected range was 139 to 129. This didn't. This was uh, in the 138s on the high right over here, and getting down over here into the 129. So that was pretty close to spot on. We expect that the yield range would be from 80 to one uh, to 190. We were very close on there. It got up to one. Uh, 73 it still could get up to 190 this year and we thought it would end the year near its lows where it is right now and that the bond bear market was confirmed when it broke 136.22 at this level right there that we were now entering into a bond market bear now let me tell you a little bit about what you're looking at here these are the ideal cycles this is just a measure of the average distance from important low to important low. Each of these cycles has variance. This one you could see 22 weeks, 21 weeks, only 15 weeks, 18 weeks, 20, 19, and 20 right over here. That uh, gives you an idea of the average length right over here and the variance of the lengths. This note right over here says that if it bottomed early, it was very likely that the, that low would be tested or taken out. This is what happened right over here, a 14-month bottom with a 22-month bottom, a 12-month bottom making a 15, and then this early 14 making a 19-month low. So where are we right now as I look at this? Well, got to look at this right there. What we have here is looking at uh, this cycle right in here was extremely positive, made a 20-month low. If I said week before, I meant month. Then you had this rally, and you had this failure, this left-hand translation. In other words, the left side of this cycle brought the top, and then it broke underneath that cycle low at 136.22, confirming a bearish condition. This 10-month low was way too early, and it said that this rally would fail, and then we'd be seeing it move down again. A month ago was the next low, which was only at 16 months. Well, we showed you on the weekly chart that the probabilities are high it's going to decline into February. So if that would be the case, then the next projected low would be on the, around the 20th bar, which is where February comes in, at about 129 which is a 1.82 yield. So this cycle projects out to making its next trough, its next bottom in February, uh, giving you a, a yield somewhere over 180, maybe 182. And of course, if it really turned into a free fall down to this next support level, the yield would be at around 218. So that's a look at the futures, which uh, when we look at the weekly and we look at the monthly, give us an indication that there is likely to be an interest rate spike as futures decline between now and February. If I switch this over to the TNX, where I'm looking at 10-year yield and blow this out, this is really interesting because this is the yield picture in here where yields were just continuously moving down, well, all the way from 1981, but uh, just looking back here into 1998, uh, and continuously in this downtrend. And it certainly has not broken out of the downtrend yet. 
and the top of the declining channel right over here is right up at this 78.6% level. Let's look at the cycle patterns in here, and you can see the big dominant cycle. This is beautiful where that low came, where the low came, where the low came, and right over here where the low came. Each of these green zones are the rising phases in interest rates, as you can see, and we're in one of those right now. And here are the minor little cycles on the bottom. And when those little cycles end, as it did right over here, you get another spike to the upside, as you could see at that point. Minor cycle ended here, another spike to the upside. So we are now looking at the potential for this next period where interest rates spike. Again, this level right over here is at about 182 at that major 50% FIB. This level right over here is at about 217, 218 at the 161.8% FIB. And this level over here is at uh, about uh, 2.64 right there at the 78.6% uh, FIB. There are three tracks in here that uh, we could be moving up. And it really looks like between now and early part of 22, and maybe even into the middle of 22, that interest rates could be moving up and up in a very sharp way. And uh, we would expect that that would be a uh, time frame when the uh, interest rate spike and the stock market doesn't like it and be moving down again. So this is that beautiful picture of cyclicality in yields, uh, which really says that uh, it's likely to get at least to the 50% upside retracement, which it hadn't quite made in here yet or to go even further during each of these green zones that you see here. And the question is, are interest rates making a big base in here to go much higher in coming years? And I actually think that is the case. For those of you that are really interested in cycle analysis, we give you the cycle harmonics in here of the three cycles, which are 22, 44, and 66 months, uh, you can see. And uh, here you can see this. TNX, uh, it reflects what is nearly a 40-year bear market here, now at 40 years uh, in yields, uh, and that is probably coming to an end thanks to the uh, inflation uh, rate that was engineered uh, by the government and by the Federal Reserve. So uh, the whole entire picture that we showed you in here is that the weekly pattern in bonds is suggestive that well, it's breaking down and negative. It will soon break down and give you higher yields. The monthly patterns join in with that and project to February, where the interest rate peak will likely be of this move. And that is expected to be between uh, 1.82 and 2.14 approximately uh, on the upside, if I have that number right. Uh, that's what I showed, uh, and uh, those uh, yields uh, patterns very much in line with that. Overall, that gives a picture of uh, negative bond market, uh, um, yields moving up, and a condition that certainly could be disruptive uh, to this big bull stock market that we're in. Now, historically, um, interest rates can move up, and that happens for a while before the stock market is negatively affected that old three steps and a stumble rule. But of course, things are different now. Things move faster. And it uh, really looks like the uh, potential for the interest rate spike affecting the stock market negatively. Well, we've already had this, the, the yields moving up for months and months, as you see. Uh, so uh, I think that a aggressive move in interest rates will negatively affect stocks. That's the US Treasury. Uh, big picture analysis. All right, let's talk about the stock market. We're going to look at the S&P 500 SPY at that analysis as we get an intermediate view. I'm going to give you a little picture of our multiple um, time frame uh, grids that we share, and you'll get a little picture of some of the short-term uh, information uh, that our members get. Also, we'll look at that live stream in just a moment. So uh, let's take a look here as I move away from the TNX and put up SPY. Uh, looking at the SPY weekly. And uh, here is that analysis right over here. Let me just get a little closer look right there. So where we are right now is that um, the uh, uh, oops, I, am I in a uh, monthly chart here? Sorry about that. 
There it is. There's the SPY. Uh, there's the weekly chart, and there is SPY. I'll get this right. So what we're looking at now is the um, uh, intermediate patterns in here. And what we see in here is that the uh, uh, cycle rhythms on the bottom here are generally in the 20 weeks as we look at that. And this has been, since the pandemic low, an amazing upward track that we've had with more than 100% gains in the stock market. Um, the harmonics that we're looking at on here are 22 and 11 weeks, where the 11 weeks kind of make a mid-cycle bottom in these positive configurations. You could see that one right over here, not much of a decline. Right over here, a bigger decline. And that one actually fooled us. Let's take a look at just these last two cycles right in here. And what I want to show you is where we are right now. So this cycle bottom, where both of these cycles bottomed right in here, was uh, an amazing low of only a 3.6% decline. That was the most shallow, showing you the most powerful market condition that we have, well, maybe ever seen. Most intermediate cycle patterns move down, uh, if they're positive, between 5 and 10% uh, even, uh, and then, uh, of course, begin to move up again in bull markets. Momentum in here, as you see our reversal scout, actually never turned down at all. That was really amazing. Here, though, during this uh, first half, this minor cycle right over here, we broke that 78.6%, and that told us that a market peak was in place. There were a lot of people that sent us emails. You said the market peaked. Well, this was the highest probability at that time that the market had peaked, that there would be a rally that would fail and then move down. That didn't happen. What happened was something that happens only maybe less than 30% of the time, where you break this down as deep as this level and then move up to a new high. That's an extremely positive condition for that to happen. And again, the reversal scout showed us the positive momentum resuming right in here and then the market blasted through to all-time highs. In fact, in these couple of weeks in here, you had uh, eight consecutive up days and eight consecutive all-time highs. So where are we right now? Well, the, uh, we'll, we'll talk about market conditions in just a second. Here we are, as I, as I blow this up, and this is an important 127% FIB uh, extension confluence. This comes off of several minor cycles and uh, you could see the market stalling in there. Were it to be able to get through that level and in the next rally, which we think is coming, it will test these levels, most likely, and potentially get up to these levels here. This is 473 right there. This level is 476. Uh, so a breakout above that 470 probably gets you to 473 or 476 before this corrective period comes in. All of those yellow ovals are corrective periods that you see, and each of those brought well between that really rare 3.6% right there and declines that were much bigger. This one here was 10.8% uh, when we look at that, and of course this was the pandemic at 35%. So each of those yellow corrective phases tends to bring large declines, and that's what we saw. Uh, and uh, so the a best case that I can make is a decline of about 250 points in the S&P 500 coming between now and sometime mid-December. That's what that looks like. But right now, market conditions are not supportive of a decline. S&P 500 conditions, as we have down over here, intermediate term, momentum is positive, cycle patterns are positive. Short term, which is on our daily charts that we share with our members, positive, momentum is positive, cycle patterns are positive. And we're even in a condition of a bottom pending in the short term. While we're in a little corrective condition right now, it's pretty likely that it's going to restore its movement to the upside and then take out that 470.65 high and then in the S&P 500 SPY uh, trade up potentially to 473 to 476, 
before hitting this bump as we see it in here of some 200 250 points on the downside likely and then getting into another positive period out over here into early part of next year which is an extension of the bull market beyond where my original analysis was a year ago or even six months ago so this is a much better condition we're looking at conditions still strong on the intermediate uh, and on the short term and likely that after this little decline we were looking for into this week that uh, the stock market will be moving up again and that's despite what we said about an interest rate spike coming but it might be that interest rate spike that brings this right in here that we're expecting if you remember we said that interest rates are likely to spike into late January or into early February that's going to give the market problems right in here the stock market problems let's take a little shorter look here uh, at the stock market or a multiple time frame look uh, just to get a sense for what the conditions are right now in the stock market here I'm going to our, our chart streams page and you can see in here that what we have we have an interday chart which gives you fantastic information for interday traders uh, and then we have our chart streams multiple time frames uh, in all of these uh, key symbols right over here that we broadcast you don't need any special um, platform uh, to see those uh, all you need to do is to be an Aslim level three or four member though the spy for the next week you can actually see for free if uh, you're not a member and you become a uh, popular services uh, preview member uh, and you'll be able to see the SPY uh, in the next uh, for the next seven days uh, at no cost to you along with some other things I'll show you in a moment so I'm clicking on that and it brings up this beautiful live page you see right over here these charts are now live it's bringing that up to darken uh, uh, when I do this broadcast the dark uh, the, the bottom half tends to darken uh, but what you see in here is multiple time frames as you look at the weekly conditions the daily the two years with our proprietary indicators on here and then this 15 minute view right over here so what we're looking at uh, it gives you multiple time frames depending on what your style is and uh, if you're looking at the uh, you know a longer term holder the weekly momentum is super powerful and the daily momentum with the slim ribbon showing there is super uh, powerful when you look at that also on the bottom the option bias indicator is all green as you can see there on a p3 and that is super powerful also the market condition indicator here in the 90s on the two hour chart is very powerful and the slim ribbon has been giving you these positive signals on the slim ribbon po on the two hour chart and uh, that has not really changed in here uh, until it's just gone a little bit neutral right there and what you can see here in the two hour chart is it's in a correction right there at the time that the daily chart is moving up very strongly this tells you as it gets down into support and as the cycles are getting ready to bottom that it's likely that you're going to get a bottom made in here and then another upward turn and when this when these when this turns back up this is the reversal scout the momentum condition will be warning you that uh, the market is moving up again in a positive condition this is the 15 minute chart it's showing just no ability to get any real momentum going and chopping uh, that you can see right over there so it's pretty much uh, the inner day is in a kind of a neutral condition the uh, two hour chart is in a corrective condition coming down to support but the weekly and daily are still very powerful along with our proprietary indicators the option bias indicator that blue dots are those green dots on the left and uh, the uh, market condition indicator right on the bottom of the two hour chart uh, all of those are giving you a very very positive reading and suggestive of the fact that when this correction that we're in right now just a little pullback in the stock market is over that it will be moving up again you want to watch that two hour um, the two hour reversal scout right over here that will be the first indicator that this a uh, little corrective pullback that we're in is over and that the market is then moving to new highs again that is coming off of our chart streams all of these symbols in here do have that live running uh, on our platform 
uh, and you can actually uh, get uh, the that one I just showed you uh, if you do uh, become uh, an Aslim member. So that's my wrap up on the stock market. Uh, and uh, uh, for those of you that do want to get uh, a peek at our popular services, uh, you can do this seven-day free trial. There's no credit card required. All you're going to do is give us your you know, email address, and we're going to give you all of this. That's our SIR daily snapshot with uh, unbelievable information that you're uh, going to see on all of the indexes. The SIR live grid uh, chart stream, which is the 15-minute uh, charts, the S&P 500 multiple time frame chart stream, which is the one I just showed to you, uh, with that uh, great uh, view of uh, seeing all the conditions in those different time frames and how you really understand where the market is right now, really at a glance, you're going to get our daily trade ideas uh, where you're going to see uh, Arvi's amazing work, uh, where he not only gives you the, the highest uh, 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 possible um, probability entries, uh, also tells you where the trade will be going wrong at what level uh, and gives you the targets. Uh, it teaches you all about cycle analysis uh, on each of those trade ideas. You'll see my future speak where I show you 52 charts. That's 26 each on different symbols in six categories of the futures market uh, in weekly and daily and teach cycle analysis on there. Also, you get our Slimulator, uh, which is our ranking system. Uh, on bullish and bearish rankings for the 84 best traded symbols there are, stocks, ETFs, and futures. That is an amazing page you're going to look at. And again, that has all of our charts on there in static version uh, for normally level three members. And you'll get our Slimulator Momentum Tracker for uh, longer term holders, over a thousand symbols, 22 can groups. Nowhere will you see anything as, uh, uh, as comprehensive of this on momentum conditions with our proprietary algos built into it. Slimulator Momentum Tracker, a great app that you'll be able to use. All of that to you for free. All you have to do is go to the top of the SLIM main page, sign up for our popular services preview, premium services preview, as it says right over here. I like it to say popular because it certainly is. Uh, and you can sign up right there. you have any questions on that, write to matt at askslim.com. That's going to wrap us up for this show. I hope you found it extremely informative. Uh, make sure if you uh, uh, jump forward and didn't see our analysis on the big picture of the bond market, I think it's important to watch. To watch. I want you to be so unbelievably careful. It is so crazy out there. And I'm always wishing you great trading.